This is the first ever selfie video I've ever taken, so <laughs> give me some mulligans today. My name is John LaRue. I'm the manager of collections and exhibitions here at the Beaver Art Gallery in Fredericton, New Brunswick. And so welcome. I know it's a tough time for everyone. Um, we're not sure where all this is going, but I know that through all catharsis and difficult times, it's actually the most important time to surround yourself with things that matter, things with meaning, things with beauty. And so it's my pleasure to share some of the works here at the Beaverbrook Art Gallery with you. And I'm going to be doing this regularly for however long this crazy episode lasts. So as you can see here at the Beaverbrook Art Gallery, uh, it's a little quiet today. We are closed to the public as most places of assembly are, but it allows me to be in here and to safely show you some things. So what we're going to do is each time I'm going to focus on one object that that has some, uh, some meaning and a really special story. And so we're here in our Atlantic Canadian Gallery. As you can see, works from the Canadian region. There's the Grandfather Canoe, some other things we'll be talking about soon. Uh, it's, it's actually hard to come in a space like this and just talk about one thing, but we're going to do it. And for my very first little web video, we're going to talk about this. This is The Dining Room with the Red Rug by so many people's favorite artist, Mary Pratt, then in 1995. And Mary sadly left us two years ago, but she left us with so much more. These wonderful, wonderful works. And she was one of the most loved artists in Canada, and for good reason. Mary was an amazing artist uh, and, a, and a wonderful person. She was an avowed realist. She loved depicting things that existed around us, things that were tactile, that we could touch, that we could understand. And so in a realist mode, she often worked from slides as well. And she wasn't ashamed of this. So many artists work from, from the visual and photography over the years. And what it did, it allowed her to capture a very brief moment in time, uh, this sort of fleeting moment with light and shade and shadow, which otherwise you couldn't do. This painting is, is a wonderful example of Mary's work. It was gifted to us in the mid-90s when she had a retrospective here called The Substance of Light. And it depicts her dining room table and chairs in the dining room of the house that she grew up in, which is still in her family's uh, possession, actually. It's, it's still owned by her sister, Barbara Cross, and it's on Waterloo Row here in Fredericton, facing the St. John River. And this was her parents' dining room table, and as a child, she used to color and do artworks on top here with her sister. So in some ways, Mary Pratt's art career started right at this table right here. It's still in the, in the family's possession. It was uh, actually a wedding gift for her parents. It was bought at Lamont's Furniture in Fredericton in the early 1930s, and it's still in the space. And in fact, the room is very much similar today as it was then in the 90s when she painted it, and also in the 30s when she grew up. The only difference is uh, the carpet, uh, the original red carpet is not there. It's, it's a bit slightly rose now, it was altered. And the, uh, the walls are no longer green, although they were green for you know, a good 50 years. What this painting shows is obviously a dining room set, sort of traditional. See, all of the chairs don't have arms, the ones where the moms and kids would sit. But look, oh, the dad's chair has arms. So some of these also have a little bit of kind of a paternalistic evidence of what things were like back then. There certainly was a head of the table. Uh, dining room sets now are kind of all the same, but it's, it's an interesting little detail. Um, so her dad did sit there. Uh, Mary loved her father, and he was, he was a great man. His name uh, was Judge, Judge West, um, and he was a Supreme Court Justice, and he was quite involved politically in New Brunswick. And he was very supportive of Mary's art career, and certainly of her going to Mount Allison to study fine arts, as she did in the 1950s and early 1960s. So her dad sat there. And this is interesting because, as you can see, that the chair is bathed in light. It's the one area where you're really drawn to. When you look, it's, it's very much kind of an overall composition. You're really drawn at first to that red carpet, that sort of blood red carpet, which is there. It's very, very visceral, very passionate. Uh, but that also was the color that was there on the carpet at the time. Mary was drawn to red, so that's probably some of the reasons she was drawn to the subject matter as well, beyond uh, the memories of that space. But as soon as you look at this, you're drawn right to that chair. And you can see as well in the shadows from the front window, which faces the, the river in Waterloo Row, you can actually, it's quite masterful, you can see right there the shadows of the cactus, which is in that window. It's, it's outside the picture frame, but you know it's there, which is actually matching to this 100-year-old cactus here, which her sister still has in that house, by the way. So 
one of the things this does is this device where it gives us as a viewer credit to understand what's actually outside of the picture frame. So we're, we're seeing evidence of something that's just right about here sitting on the windowsill. She was most concerned with light. And the scene of this is all about light with the focus of sunlight here and shade and shadow and the rest of it. And look at, look at the shadows here kind of coming off where you're sort of near that direct light on this chair. And then it sort of uh, becomes a bit more sfumato here as it, as it wanders out. It's a tremendous exercise in light. Um, it also talks about her sense of, of nostalgia and meaning. This was done at a time which was difficult for Mary's life in the mid-90s. She was going through a divorce with Christopher Pratt. Uh, so this was a series. She did a whole series of works uh, based on interior spaces in the house where she grew up in, on Waterloo Row, this being one of them. Another one was of a dollhouse that her father built for her. One was of her parents' room. And uh, it, it, it's something where she would have taken a photograph of this back at Painted in Newfoundland. There's her father's records in there behind. Um, the one thing that it shows as well that really strikes me about this, we also had this painting out. When Mary died in 2018, we had to, that, that day when we found out, we put up a painting and made a memorial wall to Mary. This was the one that we chose, partly because it, it speaks about her and her life in Fredericton, her connection to this place, but also of a sense, not in a morbid way, but of, of loss. You're, you're looking at a, at a table in a room which normally is meant to be filled with people and activity and food and gathering and socializing and discussion. And at this time, it's not. Now, not in a morbid sense, but there is a void of habitation there. So when you look at, certainly when you look at even the light on this, there is still a spirit. There's a presence, a presence there, and there is a life in that. So it's not as if this is devoid of life, uh, but it just, it certainly speaks that moment when it is not occupied. And so there is a little bit of, a, of a, a tinge of sadness to this as well. But there's two ways of looking at it. Is it a table which is, is no longer occupied, or is it just simply waiting for people to come and occupy it? It could go both ways. But I also see it that, that certainly with this one, which has sort of the arms, is a bit more anthropomorphic as sort of you can, you can really picture someone sitting in this particular chair. So it still has the presence of someone there. Um, it, it's, it's a masterful composition because of this. It's, it seems symmetrical, but still sort of slightly asymmetrical, even when you look at the perspective lines of the table she's standing, just a little bit askew of it. So there's a little bit, it's balanced, but a little bit off as well. Compositionally, it's astounding with the red and the green. Mary Pratt loved red, as I mentioned. She used it in so many of her works. And another one of her really famous works here is this one called Cold Cream, which is a portrait of her famous model, Donna. And we can see the red towel up above and uh, even the red lips and the very burgundy um, uh, bathrobe. So over here, we'll just go down. You can see Mary's signature right there. Mary Pratt, 95. She had great signatures. As her father built this house in the early 19, or sorry, in the late 1930s for his growing family. It was done in 37, 38. And he had a copy of Good Housekeeping magazine one time, and it had their house of the year. And Judge West saw this, and he and his wife decided, that is the house we will build for our family. So this is actually an exact copy, and it's taken from the plans of Good Housekeeping, House of the Year from 1937. Even so far as the color on the walls, the reason that's green is those were the colors that Good Housekeeping suggested the dining room was. Same with the red carpet and so on. So, so their, house, their house mimicked down to the paint colors what that house was and uh, actually I actually have images of that because her sister Barbara at the house they still have that original magazine so it's this incredible historical archival connection. You can see to some of these sort of domestic ideas of, of formality of the flower Mary always loved flowers with a cactus behind and what you're also getting is this idea of her working from slides you can see how the, the cactus here behind is slightly more blurry a little bit more out of focus and less sharp than the pieces here in the front where you get really that kind of crisp detail and so on these edges so it also talks about her working from slides it gives that physical evidence of her working from a medium that that she embraced and she was very good at so um, where she didn't shy away from from that idea of depth of field which you get in photographs which you don't get normally when you look at something unless your eyes are bad this is mine are fast growing um, you really get that uh, that difference in depth of field and sharpness here in uh, the portrait of, of Donna, where it's sharp in the front and it starts to get a little bit sort of more blurry, blurry here in the back. Um, anyway, this is a, is a masterwork. Mary gave it to us. 
in the mid 90s and in fact I'm sure we actually have a letter in our files which talks about her saying she's so happy that this painting is here at the Beaverbrook and in Fredericton because she figured that's that's where it, it actually belongs to this place and just this area that it, it belongs to Fredericton. All right, thanks so much. And it was a pleasure to share this with you. And we're going to be doing this a lot more over the next couple months. Every few days, I'll be bringing a new masterwork to you and having some fun with it. And so uh, keep joining me, spread the word. And it's my pleasure to hopefully make your day a little bit, uh, a little bit brighter.